I've talked uh, about protocols in the last few videos uh, off and on, so let's talk a little bit more about protocols. So protocols are rules on how we communicate. Uh, they define the format of our message, uh, how do we segment the data, uh, how do we encapsulate that with information to put it onto the wire and transmit it to our receiving destination, uh, it, how to deal with errors, what if, what if uh, two pieces of data collide on a wire, what do we do with that, how do we handle that. Uh, protocols deal with all that information, how do we talk on a certain type of media, that's that's what they do. What are the rules for communication? Uh, most of them are ratified with two different groups. One of them is here, the IEEE. Uh, the IEEE is the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, and they mostly do with the specifications um, for media types and standards. So, uh, if you ever heard of like 802.11a, b, g, n, uh, a, c. And, and so on, uh, that's what they do, or 802.3 for Ethernet, they, they deal with um, the electrical side of things on creating new media types and specifying how the electrical signaling occurs on some sort, or radio signaling occurs uh, to allow us to communicate at certain speeds and with certain rules. Uh, so you have them to thank for, you know, your fast wireless access or uh, the faster Ethernet uh, access that we have. Uh, we've gone from, like I said, 10 megabits to 10 gigabits now, um, just on standard networks. Uh, wireless has gone over from, has increased in speed greatly over the last several years, uh, all thanks to the IEEE. So that's, they're mostly electrical engineers that deal with the specifications on media type. We also have the uh, engineering, the Internet Engineering Task Force, sorry, the IETF. Uh, they deal mostly with the protocols themselves, the, uh, the software side of things, uh, defining uh, defining the protocols that we use uh, up the stack of the OSI model, which we'll get into. So you have the IETF to thank for things such as being able to view this web page with HTTP, uh, how the web page gets to us through TCP uh, and IP, uh, all those protocols, they, they deal with that. And actually, all the protocols are, and additional information, uh, are shared publicly through request for comments, or RFCs. You'll hear me reference that a lot and show a lot of that stuff uh, going forward. You can actually look up the RFCs that we'll talk about. You can either search for them with title or keyword or the number, which is usually preferred. And it'll show you all of the specifications of that protocol. So for example, we'll use good old 1918, which is the allocation for private internets, which when we get into the future videos and talk about IP addressing, this allows you to have that, this, this specification from 1996 tells you how you're allowed and what ranges you can have to use uh, private addresses on your local network, such as 192.168. Dot something or 10. Dot something or 172.16. Dot dot something. That's that's where this comes from. So what you can do is you can click on that, go to the ASCII version, for example, and it'll show you here's the entire document, who it was written by, what the date was, introduction, what, why are we doing this? Here's the private address spaces defined themselves. You know how do we do that? Sometimes if it's a protocol. Uh, this one's not necessarily a protocol, but something different, but it's related to internet protocol anyway. But if it's a new protocol, it'll say, like, here's the different fields within a um, within the header, what they mean, why we use them, what bits get turned off and on, things like that. Uh, it's a very useful uh, resource if you want to learn more in excruciating detail <laughs> about certain protocols. Uh, you can't You can't get any more detailed than the RFC itself. I mean, this is the defining, these are the defining documents of the protocols that we use every day. Uh, and that's the IETF. There are also other organizations out there uh, that will, uh, that do things, that they do specifications in other areas of the world and we occasionally use them here. Uh, we'll get, we'll talk about them when we get to them, but uh, like ISO, for example, we'll, we'll talk about. Um, but mostly, the, most of the ones we use are through the IEEE for the media and the IETF for the protocols in general. 
Uh, sometimes the protocols, they're grouped into stacks. So I mentioned IP and TCP. So t the TCP IP stack is a definition of many protocols that all act, they all interop and, and act together. As uh, So whenever you hear someone talking about TCP IP, it's usually together as a stack because it's one package of protocols. That's that's very common, especially with larger uh, larger protocols such as that. Uh, some other examples, uh, like I said, are HTTP, um, SMTP, POP. Uh, from an IP standpoint, you have TCP and UDP. You have IP. You have older ones like IPX and Apple Talk and stuff like that. Um, they all have different. They all do different things. So, for example. HTTP is an application protocol. It defines how the application packages its data and for transit. Uh, TCP defines how does is a transport protocol. It defines how do we transport that data from the application uh, over the next over the connection that I'm going to use. Um, and then IP, which is below that, the network protocol. That's going to say, well, how do how do I address things logically? How do you know? How do I know to send it to John down the street? What's his What's his address? What's his number? How do I get it there? What are the rules for doing so? Uh, so they all work together to get a web page to display, for example. So you'll you'll use HTTP, you'll use TCP, you'll use IP. They all work together. And with that, uh, you know that's that's a good good spot to branch into. Uh, the actual OSI model and the TCP IP models. So we'll do, we'll, we'll go into the video of that next. Uh, and we'll talk about, I mentioned the application and transport network layers uh, for HTTP, TCP, and IP. Uh, so we'll get into that and what the OSI model looks like and what the TCP IP model looks like and how, they, how they're similar and how they're a little different and why you'd use one or the other uh, to describe something.